Hello my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from Dadex and our lovely shiny Cormorant. Not the first time you've seen a Cormorant on the channel, in fact it's where it all started pretty much, say 10 minutes in a Merlin. But we're going to take another dive into low sec, set ourselves up a little FOB. I've fitted this in the very traditional manner in low sec belt ratting mode we've got iron blasters in the top slots for lots of dps i can't fit neutron blasters on here with the rest of the fit with the alpha skills i've got the core probe launcher because we're going to look for some sites where we might find explorers or we might find riches we've got one medium shield extender too that's going to give us enough tank enough hit points to get in on the clone soldiers the micro warp drive in this case it's a restrained right now is going to get us into the clone soldiers quickly so they can't destroy us with their very powerful guns. The web is obviously there to slow the rats down. Remember the clone soldiers in a 0.2 system will web you so you need to web them back to keep them in your optimal. Down in the low slots we've got a magnetic field stabilizer 2 and a mark 1 compact reactor control unit. Give us a bit of extra power grid. I've got some to spare I'll get back to that. In the rig slots we're closing the EM hole with one rig We've got one shield extender rig and we've got one damage rig for the guns. All of these rigs do increase the power grid need of the relevant modules, so the guns and the shield extender. If you're a bit short of power grid, you could change the rigs. You could go to a compact shield extender, a compact micro warp drive. I do also have a 2% power grid implant on this alt. That is for another version of this fit and for fitting other ships. So I'm quite often a little bit over blessed with the power grid. But as we'll see later, that's not the case when we switch this fit around for a bit of sight running and switch the blasters out for rail guns. Anyway, right now, the blasters using void ammo, the close range tech 2 ammo, we've got 375 DPS. And that gives us a 2800 meter optimal and a fall off of just shy of 4k. Very close range, high DPS, but we're going to save that for the big ships, the clone soldiers and the battleships when we're out on the belt. Most of the time, we're going to be using null ammo. Yes, it's lower DPS, but it's longer range, hits more, so you actually get the belts cleared quicker if it isn't a big tanky ship you're trying to hit. And with that, we've got an optimal of 5,200 meters and fall off of 8.5 kilometers, so over double the range. And we're getting 232 DPS on the fit screen, but we're going to be hitting the stuff more often. In the hold, we have everything we need to multi-purpose this ship. We've got selection of ammo for the blasters. We've got rockets for the rocket launcher. We've got some rail guns to switch to for running 3 out of 10. That's why we've got those on board. The rocket launcher, if we're not going to be doing any scanning, switch that in. It's a little bit of extra DPS. Not a huge amount, but why not have it? Alternative for that utility slot could be an energy Nosferatu. That is quite a popular one if you're going into the PvP side of things. But I must admit, that is also why I have a second web on board. A dual web blaster cormorant can be very horrible to find in the wrong circumstances. We've got another shield extender here. It's because with the rail guns, I have to save some power grid somewhere. And that is one of the ways I'm going to do it. And I've got a warp scrambler because you never know, eh? I'm also going to stop and pick up a few little bits and bobs on the way over. Um, definitely some more ammo. The idea is for this cormorant to go off on our expedition, which we will look at now and be pretty self-sufficient. But I'm not going far from Stackmon, which is where I'm starting. It's where the local trade hub is which can be okay, it has everything I need, and I'm just going to look for a little chain of low sec systems around here. You've got lots of options around Stackmon, it's a good little place to set yourself up. I don't really want to be heading that way. What I want is a nice quiet pocket of 0.2 systems, because they have the clone soldier transporters that are my favourite. Now what's this here? We've got a funnel over here heading to Pain, Destination Pain. That's a 0 0.1. We've got some 0 0.2s on the way. And there's probably not much around because there's no through traffic. So we'll go over there and we'll have a look. I have no idea what we'll find. We came out here once from a wormhole. And I did get a 450 mil Shadow Serpentis rat on a belt completely randomly. So fingers crossed, eh? So I'm on my way out to Payne. I've stopped here just to test the fit against these three cruisers on a belt. And also local because uh, it's nice to know what the locals are up to. So this is actually one of the harder spawns because they do hit you quite a lot, these cruisers. But I'm mostly checking my D scan. We've got some people in local. I know one's in a corp that actively PVPs. There's a Gnosis on D scan. 
lo and behold there's a gnosis on grid so we just bug out now the gnosis is the fastest locking battle cruiser in the game that's why you see it a lot on gate camps it can be rigged to lock up very quickly for its size but i'm generally confident that unless i'm not paying attention he does really well or i mess up i'm never going to get caught by a battle cruiser not even a gnosis it can happen one day no doubt new eden will make sure it does happen point i'm trying to make is that's no reason to panic you just move on if that is your first belt you've ever landed on in low sec then just move on i wouldn't suggest that if you're inexperienced you belt rat in a system with four people on local and ships on your d scan if you can see them they can see you the d scan is your eyes in low sec the overview is your nose if they're that close <laughs> you might already be in trouble if you need to learn how to use the D-Scan, which is a must-have skill, really, it'll keep you safe in so many areas in the game. Check out the link up above right now. So the Cormorant is now sat on a Serpentis refuge site I've just cleared. I'm clearing the refuges and hideaways I see just to try and get an escalation off them. Occasionally, there'll be a Shadow Serpentis rat spawn. Very occasionally, that rare spawn will drop some decent loot. But I'm really after escalation as to 3 out of 10s from there, and... I could scan down a 3 out of 10 with my probes too. Look on the Eve Uni site if you don't know what the sites you're finding are. You could also find some relic and data sites that you just know where they are in case there happens to be a heron on your D-scan. Although as we saw, we're only 5 jumps maximum from the shops basically, so if we find something good we can nip and get another ship to exploit it. Anyway, we have landed on a clone soldier negotiator on a 0.1 belt. These are the toughest of the clone soldiers. For those that haven't seen me in low sec before in a video, I'm amazed that you haven't because so many of them are me in low sec. But this is kind of where it all began. This is the bread and butter. These are horrible, horrible rats. It's going to scram me at some stage. It's going to pin me down here. It's running in to get into orbit and I waste a bit of time on this particular one because I land at that kind of should I, shouldn't I. It is the run-in with the micro warp drive where I'm going to take all the damage as I am now. In fact, I do think about aborting this one and coming back and trying again, but no, I decide I'm close enough to give this a go. We've got all that hull and all of that armour. What can go wrong? Once I get in on my nice tight orbit, I should be pretty free from damage if I can keep my speed up and control my range. And the blasters will do their work. We've got more than enough DPS to break this guy's tank. The issue is that the whole time we're here, we can't go anywhere. I'm a free meal for anyone that joins me on this belt. Especially now, look, <laughs> I'm in the hole. Luckily, it does calm down. I ride it out. So uh, this is really down, as I say. I've cleared these much more cleanly with the Cormorant. It was that indecision. What I was doing was looking for an asteroid to maybe bookmark, warp out, walk back in right on top of the clone soldier. There wasn't one. So here we are, getting a little bit beaten up, but is the prize worth the damage? That's the question. Now, I talk a lot about the clone soldier transporters in the 0.2. The difference is they will web you, but won't point you. And you can get away if you're feeling uh, nervous or somebody indeed just join you on grid. You've got a much better chance of getting away. I've started overheating the guns and the rocket launcher on this guy to break through his armour. As you may have noticed, he's got some reps going on. You'll see it more later with a lower DPS ship trying to tackle one. But uh, yeah, overheating is just a case of getting the job done quicker. We want to be here for a short amount of time as possible. Keep an eye on it, they will overheat very quickly. And the overheating percentage per cycle gets larger with each cycle. So be careful. Obviously, get used to overheating out in high sec in a safer place than this. Just see how long you can run your guns overheated. Even if they burn out, you just go back to a station, repair them. But you don't want it to happen when you're actually out on a belt. So uh, learn how to overheat and how much time you've got. Train up your thermodynamic skill to mitigate the heating. Remember to grab the tag. That's showing a 20 million isk value. It is a little bit lower than that. Um, and it's not really worth much more, if anything more, than the Clone Soldier Transporter tag from the 0.1s, which is a little bit less stressful to get hold of. So that's why I aim for where the 0.2s are, and uh, I'll have a go in the 0.1s as and when, depending on the state of local, really. Think twice about engaging these guys if there's any through traffic, because uh, I would certainly just go and have a look on the belt, see what's going on. Certainly if there's a player on D-Scan, just to see if he's stuck in this kind of a situation right here. 
So we've taken a little bit of a beating, but repairs are pretty cheap even here in this NPC station. And remember, of course, to drop off the loot. You don't want to have any hassle on a belt with a hold full of loot. The key to this system really working, okay. and if you think about it, that is the cormorant paid for right there, is not getting caught with the loot in your ship. So now I'm warping up to a gas site to actually just see what's up there for myself. Check it out. Now, uh, low sec belt mining is a game for bait ships, really. It's a bit of a waste of time, although it's a great way to learn your way around low sec in a venture and such. It's the gas sites and the mining signatures that you really want to focus on if you want to make some money in here. That's excluding moon mining. And would you believe the most valuable gas in the game is the gas that I found here in this low sec system worth over 50 million adventure full. Well, if that's not a reason to pop out to stack them on and build a gas sucking venture, I don't know what is. I'm just warping straight to the site now. See if we can make ourselves some opportunity isk as it's here. And this is basically the way you need to play low sec, I think, if you want to make money. But we found a prospect up here. My, 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 what are we going to do? Now, the thing is, this is low sec, so I could go to a different gas cloud and mine quite happily. He's a quite a new player and he's got a reasonably clean security status. No worries there, but he is in a small corp. So I could mine at another cloud. He could drop the dime and get a mate in and alt in. He could go and reship. So uh, just for lols, it's me who's going to go and reship. I've bookmarked the cloud he is harvesting so I can warp straight back there. Scare the bejesus out of him and hopefully get the gas to myself. I'm not really out for the kill, I just want to get him away from the gas. Let's see how this plays out. But first let's talk about this amazingly handsome Heke Scope Syndication skin available in this week's giveaway. Leave your comments down below ladies and gentlemen with your in-game name, very important. Just um, tell me your low sec stories or your attitude to low sec, have you never given it a go, are you just never interested in giving it a go, whatever. You know me, as long as it's interesting, but leave your in-game name in the comment and you'll be in with a chance for this week's skin giveaway. On screen now are last week's winners, so congratulations to you guys. And do remember, even if you're an alpha or you're never going to fly a Hecate, you just fly to your local trade hub, redeem the skin there and sell it on the market. Right now, they're worth about half a billion, so there you go. You don't have to wear it, I'm not your gran. I'm preheating my scrambler, the rocket launcher and the blasters. I'm probably only going to get one shot at him if I get any. If he's got any sense, he's seen me coming on his D-scan and he's ready to leave. But we'll see. I'm not here out of malice. I don't really want the kill. I want him to go away. And he has. There you go. Brilliant evasion. He must have watched one of my videos, eh? So we're back in the venture now. We've got, for now, the gas clouds to ourselves. Let's see how our new friend reacts. Obviously, he could just leave, he could just chill out, leave me to it. He might get a big ship and come back and try to chase me back off. Let's see, it's Losec, you never know. But here we are, for now at least, enjoying another one of Losec's revenue streams, and a very good one too. I don't know how much gas is on here, I haven't got a scanner to check. But who knows, I'm just going to keep huffing till I'm full. Now, in terms of getting such a high value kind of quite a high volume cargo out i will probably just fly a bench a load of gas straight out of low sec when it's full rather than end up with maybe two or three loads that need a nereus to come in nereus are very safe to use in low sec i use them a lot i have very little hassle and i haven't lost one for a long time although to be fair i usually do such high value transports with an amiga so the least they've got is a cloak and a micro walk drive to get off the gates without too much grief they're also not bad as a bait ship, but that's a story for another day, maybe. So I'm just going to chill here, suck my gas, keep an eye on how quickly it's coming in, keep an eye on my D scan, keep an eye on local, see if there's a bit of a spike, and we'll see how this goes. So LOSEC has lots to offer. What we're not going to see in this video is any more do on the belts. They're quite rare. I have done videos about them. They're very high value rats in terms of the blueprint copy that they drop. Unfortunately, nowhere near the value they used to be. The battleship blueprint dropped from 700 to 200 million, but we've got a VNI, a Vex and Navy issue on D-Scan. It's on grid with us. So it's our, <laughs> our turn to make our excuses and leave. 
but we managed to get six or seven mils worth of gas off of the site before we were interrupted so uh yeah that's the venture pretty much paid for right there i do end up after this having a nice chat with the guy he's quite a new player and one thing i said to him and i'm going to say it to you is why did you bring a big expensive bni out to scare off a guy who came up and scared you off in a cormorant um the point is ships like vnis and gealers they will just attract a lot more attention than anything else i know that from being in the corp chats and the intel chats where someone spots one and it's a big kill mail in one little package so people will come and have a go um just be wary i'm not saying don't use them you're stupid if you bring them in just be aware you're in kind of a high profile high value target ship I leave the rest of that gas to him. It's a nice big dump of this for him quite early on in his Eve career, which I don't need. I've found something else to do. I've gone back out to stack one. I've gone and got a caracal. It's a ham caracal. It will obviously kill stuff on the belts a little bit quicker. Although my DPS is lower than the destroyer. My range is obviously 20 kilometers, so I'm gonna be applying damage more of the time. I don't have Tech 2 hand missiles, it's about a 33 day train on an Alpha and I just haven't bothered investing the points into that. So uh, if I get on something juicy, it's going to be Kaldari Navy Scourge ammo that is going to be getting shot at it. Again, I brought a selection of bits as I brought it in from high sec to enable me to switch to fit round. I can go rapid light missiles, I can go long range with sensor boosters, I can go active tank, I can have a bit of a mess about, maybe even go and run some Abyss with the bits I've got in here. Who knows? But um, let's just see how this gets on. The difference between a destroyer and a cruiser is primarily you've got a lot more hit points than the destroyer has. You haven't got potentially as much DPS, but you've got much, much more tanky. But you are slower, you're easier to find, you're easier to pinpoint with probes. And because you're a little bit slower, you're a little bit easier to catch, either getting off a gate or getting off a belt or out of a sight. It's a cruiser, it's not horribly slow, and I've not had too much trouble when I do use them for belt ratting. But again, just do be aware, it's a little bit trickier to get out of a situation sometimes in a caracal than it is in a destroyer. So we're gonna give this a go now, see how this stands up against some of those rats out there. With this battleship and his mates right here, and as you'll see, it's no hassle whatsoever. You'll find lots of frigates and destroyers on these belts as well. Whether you take the time to kill them is definitely down to you. The bounties are very, very low. They're very, very easy to kill, but they can drop some quite nice modules. They can drop tags and keep your eye out always on the belts for shadow serpentis rats. Uh, in my experience, there's a higher chance if you find one on a belt of it dropping something very nice than there is if one happens to spawn on a site. Certainly not guaranteed you're gonna get goodness. Often it is still a little bit of ammo and a kinetic armor hardener, but what can you do? As you can see, we take very little damage dealing with these guys. We keep ourselves mobile, keep ourselves moving around. As you may have spotted, I currently have a warp disruptor fitted rather than a, a maybe a target painter or a web in the mid slots. That's because I've seen some people that, um, that Dex and I have met. There's some French players around the area. I saw one of them in here earlier. They're always up for a fight. They're quite tricky characters. Or they like to think they are, as we'll maybe see later. But that's the battleship down. The best battleship I found in a 0.1, the bounty unmodified is 1.1 million. And they usually drop a little bit more than that in loot too. The bounty modifier in here is just over 150%, so it's not spectacular. But well, that's the price of it being a, a relatively quiet system. Taking out the battleships on the belt is also a very good way of uh, cleaning up your security status if it needs a little bit of tidying and high sex getting a little bit dangerous because of the old police. And if you want the battleship to respawn, then leave whatever ships are on the belt with it and just kill the battleship and the game will tend to respawn in another battleship to go with the escort. So in a 0.1, the escort is going to be two cruisers. In a 0.2 and below, it's a couple of frigates. So take out the battleship, leave the escorts, come back in about 25 minutes. Although we're going to talk in detail about escalating spawns because I found an ideal system to try to do it in another time. Yeah, do that and there might well be another battleship there waiting for you to take down. So now we've gone up to a refuge up here that we've just seen. It's an anomaly site, so you don't need to scan it down. As I said earlier, we're after escalations. 
a ham caracal is probably not the optimal ship to be shooting all these little frigates with but it does the job it's a very little puny site and it's the escalations that is all we're after we maybe will get a shadow serpentis spawn and tease us with crap loot who knows the only general advice i'd give is when you're running these anomaly sites which don't need to be scanned down anyone can pop up and join you so do make sure you don't just sit on the war pin it is tempting and you know this ship could probably do it i don't need to move around at all you could just sit on the wall pin and take it all down but if somebody does come up and join you they're going to land right on you as it is now they're going to land on the site and then need to get to me give me an opportunity to choose whether i might want to take the fight or not and uh, hopefully maybe have time to get out if i decide i don't but if you're sat on the wall pin you're there to be grabbed now you don't have to have any aggressive intentions to come into low sec enjoy your eve and make a lot of this if you do learn to hunt, it will definitely make you a lot harder to hunt simply because you'll know what they're going through, how long things might take to do, what techniques they're using and how to mess with that process because you know it yourself because you've done it. You can hunt people, you can hunt your mates in high sec, you just don't pull the trigger. You can hunt random people in low sec, you just don't pull the trigger. If I ever go for a venture these days, I don't even bother putting any tackle on it. Whoop whoop, we've got the escalation. There you go. That's a 3 out of 10 dead site, a narcotics warehouse. They can drop potentially over 100 million in loot. We'll see where the escalation is. It shows up here in the exploration section. Escalations. It's in a 0 0.1. We'll probably just take a cormorant with rail guns and clear that out because uh, we just won't attract much attention in a cormorant running a 3 out of 10. They'll need to probe us down. We'll see their probes coming. We'll be safe as houses. One advantage a cruiser does have over a destroyer for belt ratting is it simply has a much bigger cargo hold so you can stay out for longer and grab more of the loot. I usually end up towards certainly the end of the run maybe jettisoning some cheap loot or just being quite selective on what I pick up. As you can see here, I've got a couple of those pink modules. They're worth good money. They're worth about three and a half million isk, purely because of the materials that they contain. The industrialists crush them. They're a warp disruption field generators, a battleship module, but their value is their materials when they've been through the crusher. Now here we are, we found another clone soldier negotiator. And uh, to be honest, I'm not exaggerating. Every time I've undocked in this system, I've found at least one of these on the belts. And there aren't many belts in here, really. So we'll see how the caracal gets on. As I said, we're slower, we're bigger, and uh, therefore a much easier target than the cormorant for the clone soldier. So we're definitely gonna take some damage. We've got lower DPS than we have with the blasters. And the issue is breaking his armor reps. So I think we're gonna need to overheat. I'm gonna save the overheating till we're into his armor, where it's gonna be most effective in breaking his reps and we'll see if we can take him down. I've got my drones out, the two mighty drones from the Caracal. They are taking the aggro right now, so I'm not getting pointed and I'm not getting hit, which is kind of nice. Some people kind of discount the drones in a Caracal completely, but in this little situation, yeah, them taking the aggro off the rat is perfect because if anyone did join me up here, obviously, I could uh, just bug out. Uh, I don't think I'd mind sacrificing two drones to save the Caracal, would you? So do remember to put your little drones out, or do remember to have drones in your caracal, even if they seem very minor in a DPS way. You could even have a go with two ECM drones if you're, uh, if you're an Omega, if you uh, want to play it really, really safe, I guess. But I'd recommend just having them as an extra bit of DPS. Or in this case, just a distraction for the rat. But he's on me now. I'm going to start overheating launchers now. I probably could have done with doing that earlier. You need to overheat your launchers with these Caldari Navy hams. I haven't got the Tech 2 hams, just to repeat that. And the DPS to break his tank, you need to overheat. And I've actually found that you're going to need to go and repair each time you've taken down one of these clone soldier negotiators to repair your ham launchers. Which is good in a way because it also reminds you to drop off the tag. Very important. This was the first one of these clone soldier negotiators that I found in the Caracal. With hindsight and with future takeouts, I have gone in much closer and orbited. It reduces their application onto you. Pulse the micro warp drive to get your speed up and uh, they'll have trouble hitting you. Because the drones took the aggro for quite a lot of the time there, I basically got him beaten up before he's even turned his attention to me. So, you know, I'm out here kind of orbiting him at 18 kilometers. 
I'd get in really close. Uh, I guess your missiles are going to get there quicker too. But I was half hoping that one of those guys might come back into local and rejoin me up here or even just force me to have to get out of his point. Because it isn't too hard to get out of their point when you're in it. You can still just burn away. But I, I didn't get an opportunity to illustrate that. But yeah, getting close and orbit. Just don't ever fly straight at the big rat. Don't use approach. Set your course with a double click and when you're getting reasonably close then switch to an orbit or just carry on flying manually back and forth to control the range that way. It's a good skill to learn. Now you can use nanite paste that you've got in your cargo hold to repair your modules kind of while you're out in space and in fact alphas can do that. They could use nanite paste to repair the modules. I could repair the hams without having to dock. However, for alphas, because you, we can't learn any of the skills that mitigate how much you need, it is excruciatingly expensive to use nanite paste to repair a module. Uh, it's actually way cheaper to throw it away and buy a new one. So it is possible, but I don't do it. Now I've cut this footage in because people often say to me, well, don't you ever get involved in any fights or start any fights? I tend to hunt the hunters, as you may have seen from my videos. There's a caracal on my D-scan. I, by the way, am in my experimental cloaked ferox. Yeah, ever heard of that before? And since it's cloaked, obviously I'm now using an Amiga clone, the Mighty and Frax. We're waiting for the caracal to land on the belt with us. If we can time it right, we'll decloak just as we can lock him up as he comes out of warp anyway. Let's see how this goes. The thing is, I know this caracal is bait. This is um, certainly one of the French guys that has been messing around with yet far. We have a bit, bit, bit of kind of jousting going on. I think it's also his alt in local. So we'll see. I'm pretty sure the caracal is bait. There's going to be a Proteus or a Loki. I'm using a narrow D scan here to try and figure out where he is because I'm sure he was headed this way. Here comes the caracal. So hit D cloak. Mash lock. If we can get on him, we'll burn him pretty quickly. Let's see what we get here. This is the other thing you have to bear in mind. When you attack something in low sec, you never know what you're going to get. And you see he's got a tackle straight on me. He is bait. He is happy to get me pinned here to whatever it is that I know is going to decloak shows up. I make no apologies for how crap the footage is. He landed on grid while I was de-scanning belts to see where he was. And I've not taken the time to set the view back to my ship. I'm running this fight off the overview. There's the Proteus. I'm thinking, can I get this Caracal? I just want the Caracal. If the Proteus takes me down, fair play. I want the Caracal. So I'm just going to go for that. I'm not even overheating yet, which is a bit silly to be quite honest. I should have preheated. It was all the excitement, I'm sure. The Proteus is coming in on me now. I need to leg it. I'm establishing warp. The Proteus has webbed me into Insta Warp. Thank you very much. Now, what happened there was... As he's come in, he's locked me up, he's hit his tackle and he's hit his web. I assume he's got a scrambler, his web has gone into effect first because he's in range of, for his web first. That immediately obviously does that little bit of maths where it cuts my maximum speed down so much, I'm already going fast enough to go into warp. So do be careful when you're going to attack somebody, you don't actually web them into warp. The same technique you use in a friendly way to get orcas off of belts very quickly. But there you go, there was me being a little bit naughty out there, but I, you know, they're PvP guys and I, that's the challenge for me now, is to not get caught in their trap and if I can kill the bait as well, nothing special there, uh, yeah, and get out, that's brilliant, it's just really playing with them man, you've got to represent sometimes, haven't you? Uh, Dex has had some brilliant fights with him, he's taken a couple of them out, he's lost some ships, he's gone out in battleships and they brought like four or five battle cruisers and they've had a good old dust stuff outside the station, all good fun and the most important thing to remember is when you're in low sec keep a smile on your face if somebody comes and kills you either you can't do anything about it or you've got the option to go and hunt them down i've got a cloaky ferox come and find it <laughs> you're welcome come into a belt near you you just see what happens when it's got two webs on it as well and polarized blasters i call it the glass sledgehammer anyway my friends i'm going to leave you there this is low sec i love low sec you, that's no secret is it coming to low sec kept me in eve it changed my game broadened my horizons i'm more confident i have more fun i have a laugh i do stupid things i wouldn't have dreamt of doing before the losses are managed it's all good so come and have a go 
you know it's not going to do your eve play any harm to just invest in a few little ships herons ventures cormorants frigates whatever and just learn your way around low set and the isk is there to be harvested in generous quantities that's it for now guys please leave us a like if you've liked it enjoyed it found it entertaining and useful comments down below with your in-game name any thoughts on low sec what's your attitude what's your experience the stupidest thing that ever happened the funniest thing that ever happened the most isklet dropped or the most frustrating thing that ever happened because that happens sometimes too low sec's a bit like real life really isn't it subscribe if you want to stay in touch and hit that bell thing because then you'll know when the next video is out shouldn't be too long promise Look after yourselves and each other, but for now my friends, remember, even is believing, fly brave, and goodbye.